Hi, Keith Grinke here from Top of May News here with Big John McCarthy. You're here in Winnipeg now, so what brings you to Winnipeg? Uh, I came to Winnipeg to uh, teach a uh, judging certification course for the Manitoba Commission and then to work at the uh, CFC. So let's talk about your uh, the course with the, the judging here. So well, like one time, like you retired a, a few months ago or a year ago, I can't uh, remember now. It was actually a lot longer than that. So there was a, anyways, there was a quote you're saying you're, one of the reasons was you're frustrated with judging. Um, and now, did the course come out of that, or were you running the course beforehand? No, I actually started the course after that. I was, uh, I'd actually done one refereeing course before it, and uh, then started coming up with the judging course and then working the refereeing course more, and it's become something where I came up with and tried to improve it as we went along, and have a system now I call it the command system, that's for certification of officials for mixed martial arts, national development, make sure that everything is being done in a more productive and more, you know, even plain so every commission, every judge is looking at things the right way. They're understanding what the fighters are really doing and they're going about doing things that show that they understand exactly what's going on in the fight so they can honestly judge the fight. So do you do something like show a fight and get all of them to judge it in the course and oh, say, absolutely. That's yeah. There's a lot of that. What we do is we go over, well, all things from, you know, what a judge you know, should be wearing to what you know you want to be doing when you're at the event, how to you know, take care of your scorecards and where to do with them, and how to uh, you know position yourself and make sure that you have the right things, and then it goes into all the techniques that fighters use in MMA. And there's you know a ton of techniques that you're going to have to know to be able to pass the course. It's uh, it's not just well that's a takedown. Well, look at he just threw a, a kick. Well, it's what type of takedown was it? What kind of submission is that? What kind of position are they in? Because those are the things that are going to separate you in knowing what's really going on in the fight and who's actually controlling the fight compared to the person who says, oh, they're both grappling. And that's not what's important. So it, it covers all that. Then it gets into, you know, we judge fights. We go over a lot of fights. We'll watch the fights. We'll have them judge the fights. And then we'll talk about what was it that made it so that one fighter actually did win this round compared to the other fighter and see how they scored. Are you seeing any positive results from the course? Is there, are you going back and is there... Do you think there's less controversies? I don't think we'll ever get rid of controversies. No, I don't think you'll subjective. ever. Well, when you say judging is subjective, judging criteria is what we want people to go off of. And when you look at the fight, it shouldn't be subjective to the judge. The judge should be viewing it the same as the next judge. A fan may look at it and think it's subjective because they're looking at the fight differently than the judges. But when you're looking at it with the eye of the way a judge should be looking at it with no emotion or no you know, attachment to any fight or anything like that, just the bare bones of what is truly effectively working in the fight and what is not. That's when you say, well, how subjective is it? It's not that it's that subjective. Everybody's going to always have things that they might look at things a little bit differently. They, they give a little more credence to one element than another, but it should be pretty, you know, standard that when one guy does something, he's getting credit for that maneuver over whatever is important. So to get away from the course now and, and go to your back to your refing career, um, you know, I think in, in fall, we've seen you like in Vitetti in Brazil, we've seen you at uh, Art of War in China, we've seen you refing uh, the main event in, in Strike Force with uh, Fedor and Brett Rogers, you know, now you're here in Winnipeg, so, you know, you know just how many air miles do you have? A lot. Like, <laughs> like when's, when's it too much? Like, are you cloning yourself? How are you in all these places all the time? You know what, it's a matter of, if it's, MMA is something that I, I love, and so to be able to referee an event, as long as it's good competition between two competent fighters that you know are equal skill, I don't care if the show is a strike force with you know Fedor and you know, twelve thousand people at it, or if it's you know a smaller show where there's not that many people. At it. It's really about the competition of what the guys are doing inside the ring. That's what I enjoy, and so if I can get to it, I'll get to it. I enjoy it competition, I enjoy being a referee, I enjoy just the aspects of, you know, what happens in the fight. So since that's what's enjoyable to me, I'll put in the air miles to get there. Yeah. So do you ref differently from, from certain fighters, from certain fighters? Like, so you, you've ref the, the UFC, hundreds of them, well, hundreds, but, uh, you know, tens of UFCs, um, you know, and you're going to ref guys who've had their first fights. 100 UFCs. <laughs> and you're going to ref guys who've had their, you know, uh, you know, first fight tonight, uh, tomorrow night. So is there a difference in is how you ref? There's a, a, an absolute steady path.
pattern that you're gonna you know bring in every time and you're gonna go with it through every fighter. You know, you're talking to them in the back, and you're using the same principles for each fighter. And you know, obviously you're gonna let people of you know a championship fight, you want them to have the ability to go on in the fight, but everything really matters upon what the person is doing in the fight. Whether they're able to intelligently defend themselves in that fight, and if they're not, then we're not gonna let them continue on in the fight, we're gonna get them out of it. It doesn't matter if it was when you look at Fedor versus Rogers and what happened with that and the big shot that Rogers took, you know, I didn't stop it when he went down, I stopped it when he ended up turning his back, turning into a few and just covering and not doing anything to try to move his position or stop what was gonna happen. It's time to end the fight because he can't he's not intelligently defending himself. If it was Fedor in reverse, I would have done the same thing. So how about if it was uh uh, John Smith fighting tomorrow, and he had to go to his insurance job. And, you know, if if John Smith got hit with that same type of shot, and then did the same thing as his opponents coming down to inflict more damage upon him, the fight's going to end. And everything depends upon if the fighter is going to try to defend themselves or not. If his opponent doesn't come after him, well then the fight's not going to because nothing's happening as far as damage against the fighter. Everything just depends upon what's happening. So going from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, and I, you know, is, is it difficult like with the different rules, so th is it, there's, times. yeah. Do you forget that, oh, I'm in Winnipeg, there's no elbows on the ground, oh, I'm in Lethbridge, there's knees to the head on the ground, oh, next fight's an amateur fight, and it's, it's you know. Yeah, it can be a problem, and it's, it's something that's why you want all commissions to try to use the same rules, because it's not only a benefit for the fighters and for the officials, but also for the fans, because then the fans get used to one set standard, and it's not, they see one thing, in one location and then they watch him fight in another location and the referees are allowing two different things. Well, it's because of what's allowed by either the promotion or the commission in those areas. It would be nice if they were all the same, but you know, here in you know, Manitoba, they don't allow the point of the elbow to be a strike point. And that's similar to what strike force, because strike force doesn't allow elbows to the head of the ground point. So I've done it all before, so it works. So I guess one thing in the fight fans' uh, minds is you know, why aren't you fighting in the UFC? I'm sure you get asked this every time. UFC had a show in California. Were you were you available for the show? Nope. Yeah, just just weren't asked. The wasn't number asked wasn't called. I think the, the California State Athletic Commission looked at it and they think that there may be a problem between you know Dana and me. I don't have a problem with Dana. I, if I was going to work the fight, I'm not working with Dana. I'm working for the California the California State Athletic Commission. So it doesn't matter to me if I get assigned to a show. I will go to the show. If I don't. I Okay, well, last question here. So, you know, definitely one of the most popular popular referees in any sport. You know, you know, and referees are so hated by. You know, I remember like a hockey fan here in Canada. You know, Don Kowarski. You know, it's like have another donut. You know, throwing donuts at the guy. I like Don Kowarski. Yeah, I, but like, you know, you have that big fight after big fight. You ref. You know, why are you so well up? Why you know, why are you more popular than a lot of the fighters? Do you have any idea what's behind it all? You know, the only thing I have, why, you know, there's people that like, they're like me, there's people that hate me, and that's okay. And the people that hate me, they don't hate me. But they have perceptions, and they get perceptions of things. And usually what happens, and I tell everybody that I instruct or everybody I talk to, you know, as far as being a referee, being a referee is not something where you're going to be liked most of the time. It's not, you know, you can look at a fight and say 50% of the people want, you know, this fighter to win, the other 50 want this fighter to win. And so, when all of a sudden it comes down and you make a decision to stop the fight, there's the 50% that wanted the fighter to win that you just stopped the fight on and you're not letting him go to, they're gonna say, oh, you're terrible. The other 50% say, oh, you were great. It was the right thing to do. What you've got to do is what's right for the sport and what's right for the fighters. Because nobody, as a fan, when a fan comes into a location, they come in to watch, they have you know a lot of enthusiasm toward it, but they don't have to live with the end result like the referee does. Because if the referee doesn't do the right thing, doesn't take care of the fighter, and that fighter suffers an injury that is because of the referee, the referee doesn't stop in time, and you allow them to take damage, and they don't recover the right way, and they can't come back, the referee's gonna live with that one the fans Yeah. Well, on behalf of Top of May News, you know, thank you for your time, you know, and have a great show tomorrow on CFC, and uh, really appreciate all you've done for MMA. Thanks. Well, thank you very much.